When it comes to planning a trip outdoors, camping offers some of the most relieving and stress-free time, especially when you are with your favorite people. Fun times are guaranteed, but what was supposed to be a fun night out with friends for a young Vanderhoof girl turned into a lifetime of anguish for her parents who haven't stopped searching for her since the 28th of May 2011. In today's video, we'll get into details concerning a 10-year mysterious disappearance of a girl called Madison Scott, who vanished while camping. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. It was the night of May 27, 2011, that Madison Scott, known to her beloved ones by Maddie, decided that she is going to a campaign birthday party with her friend Jordi. Maddie and Jordi lived in a place called Vanderhoof, British Columbia in Canada. And the place they were planning to go to is called Hooksback Lake, which was about 25 kilometers south of Vanderhoof where Madison lived. The party was for a guy named Garrett, who was turning 25. Him and Madison and even Jordi weren't that close, but they were friends. The party included a bunch of people that Madison didn't really know, but she was familiar with. So the girls arrived to the camp spot and they started setting up their tents. It was then when Madison realized that she forgot her tent poles, so she had to drive all the way back to her house in Vanderhoof given it's only 25 minutes. Madison saw her mom, took the poles and left the house to go back to the camp. She arrived there around 10 p.m. The girl then started partying, drinking and enjoying their time. At around 11.30 p.m., Madison and her mom had been texting making sure everything was good. They were talking about a song and then exchanged goodnights. At some point during the night, a rowdy crowd showed up at the camp. Some of the party goers would be known to Maddie and her friends and some would not. After a while, Jordi ended up getting in a fight with someone from the other party goers. She got her knee injured, but it was nothing serious, just a little scratch that would make her lose her mood and decide to go back home. Madison tried to convince her to stay, but eventually Jordi decided to leave and went home along with her new boyfriend, whom she met on the same night at the camp. By then Maddie was left in the camp with just 5 out of 40 people who were supposed to spend the night there, which was extremely weird. On Saturday, May 28, 2011, Jordi went back that morning at around 9 a.m. with her boyfriend to pick up her sleeping bag and her other belongings that she left behind. She then found Madison's tent and truck, but no medicine. Jordi started to walk around trying to see if Madison was anywhere around, called out her name, but she did receive no response. After a couple of attempts to find her in the nearby areas of the camp, Jordi thought that Madison went for a walk and she would come back as she knew that Madison was expert in camping and familiar with the place that she had been in several times before, so she headed back home again. An hour later, the birthday party guy named Garrett went back to the camp to clean up what was left behind the celebrations, as he always goes back the next day of every party he makes to ensure there is no mess left behind. Garrett also noticed Madison's truck and tent and again no Madison around. As the plan for Madison was to go back home in the morning but didn't show up, Maddie's mom was trying to contact her several times in the afternoon, but her calls went straight to voicemail, and then the mother started being a tad bit concerned. But she also took in consideration that the reception at Hogsback Lake wasn't always good. Later on that night, there was a party at Hogsback Lake of about 150 people. And what is so strange is that they were partying all around Madison's stuff, her truck and tents were still there, and the crowd were partying around it. Still nobody really wondered about anything. By then Sunday morning was rolling around and Madison's mom got so concerned that she finally realized she had to call Jordi's mom and ask her about Madison. Jordi's mother told her that Jordi came yesterday and that she spent the day at work as well. It was then when Madison's mother and father decided to drive to the campground and find their daughter. They arrived to find nothing but her tent and truck, but her phone and car keys were missing. She then started to ask people from all over the area then searched the four sections of the camp, but found nothing to follow. With things getting worse, Madison's mother knew it was time to call the cops. 
The search was later reinforced by the whole community who knew her and came together to try and find her. They did such a thorough search that everyone came to walk all of the grounds of Hawk's Back Lake. The people of the town who had boots also came in with sonar systems to check the water and also people with helicopters to conduct the aerial search. The investigations included literally everybody who was there starting from the 40 people of Friday's birthday party to Saturday's 150 party goers and Sunday morning passengers. Everyone was polygraphed and everybody passed including Jordi, who by the way got a lot of backlash for leaving her friend and everyone was thinking that there is more to her story and that she knows more. The investigations came out with the result that Madison was left completely alone to camp that night and that the five people that stayed with her all left as well. The birthday guy left, all his guests left, and Maddie was just there to camp by herself at Hawk's Back Lake, which her parents did not believe. It is also said that the Scouts family made it clear that they have doubts that somebody knows where she is, and they are just waiting for them to have a guilty enough conscience to come forward about it. And they also told the police that she was such a responsible girl and conscious enough to decide it was too dangerous for her to spend the night there alone. And the only thing they can think of apart from the previous speculation is that she would have fallen asleep in her tent after midnight which made her an easy target for some abductor or psycho who was stalking her maybe even before her friends left. However, all of these are just speculations as nobody, trace or even a hint that she is dead have ever appeared. Over the years there have been many ground and water searches for Madison that have yielded no clues to her whereabouts. Due to this, the police believe that Madison was taken away from Hawks Back Lake that night by way of vehicle. They have interviewed every party goer from the parties on both the 27th and 28th many times, but nobody from either party has been named as a suspect. And what happened to Madison during the early morning hours of May 28, 2011 still remains a mystery. So do you guys believe that there is a possibility of a foul play? Can the doubts of Madison's family that someone of her friends knows something be true? Or do you think that she was abducted by someone who seized the chance to kidnap her when he found her alone? Let us know your thoughts and analyses in the comments below. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos of crime and mysteries and much more interesting stories. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.